Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. In this video, I'm going to have a talk about some aspects of printing, in particular paper size. Now that covers quite a few things. It's obviously the indicated paper size, but it's the actual paper size that you're using, uh, since the two may not be the same. It's about borderless printing, if your printer supports it, different types of borderless printing, and layouts. Certainly if you want to accurately position your image on a piece of paper, some of the considerations you need to do to look at that. Now, this will vary with what software you're using, all sorts of things, but there are certain things that if you don't think about and don't actually have a look at, you're pro probably quite likely you'll produce a print and you'll get something wrong and that wastes paper, wastes ink. Certainly if you're printing on a big printer like this, you don't want to be wasting A2 sheets of paper or even the roll paper that I've got in here. Now, this roll paper is nominally, according to the box, this is Epson Cold Press Natural and it is 17 inches it says. Um, now, inches, millimeters, there can be slight differences here. Um, I tend to think of print sizes in, in inches, I, as do most people in the States, but I do measurements in millimeters just for the precision. It's just I grew up with both systems so I can use both comfortably. Now, if I look at this paper, it says it's 432 millimeters wide. Now, this particular printer, the Epson P5300, or 5360 in the States, is the same mechanical uh, aspects of the printer, the chassis, as the Epson P5000 I've used for quite a while. Now, as such, it has on the print head, it has a sensor which measures the true position of the paper and works at its width. And on the display here, if I actually look at what it says, wake it up there, it says 431.9 millimeters. So there's a tenth of a millimeter difference between what the paper says it is and what this particular paper is. So this is a strip when I was just here. This particular paper here, if I measure this precisely, it's just under 432. Now, I've seen variations in printer in paper size, certainly a roll media like this, up to a millimeter or so. It depends on a lot of things, quality control of the company making it, and you think, well, does that really matter? Well, yes, because when the printer positions where it's going to print on the paper, it has to base that relative to a paper edge. Now, most printers, even smaller printers, have some means of detecting the paper edge of where it is. Some of them, though, some of the cheaper ones, may just assume that the paper is right at the edge. That's fair enough. And then they know from the carriage positioning where it is they've got to stop printing on the other side. Now, that's fine, but if the paper is a bit short, the print is going to be shifted over towards one side. Now, this shows up particularly if you want to try and print using borderless. This particular printer, this does borderless edge to edge on sheet and on roll, but it only does borderless end to end, so it's leading edge, trailing edge. It only does that on roll paper where it can cut the paper. So you cannot get, and I've seen some confusion on this, you cannot print borderless sheet on this printer. It doesn't support it. Now, that's not a particular problem. Uh, it, this doesn't support small papers either. So if you want to print seven by fives, get yourself a smaller printer. That's not what this is for. It's a very good printer, but there are things it doesn't do. Now, boardless, problem with boardless. To get good quality boardless, you need to print beyond the edge. If you've ever tried to set a boardless image and produce it bang on up to the edge of the paper, you will almost certainly have discovered very fine white lines occasionally. It could be anywhere on the print. Basically, that is a very bad way of trying to do borderless. I know you don't want to lose any of your precious image, but you just have to accept that if you're going to print borderless, you lose a bit. Now, that uh, bit that you lose uh, at the 
leading edge, trailing edge either side. In this printer, this has um, a system that picks up ink over spray for that. Deals with, this has got a powerful vacuum system in it. So one of the reasons this printer, when it was designed, the chassis of it, was designed for heavy day-to-day -day use. And it's designed to prevent ink buildup inside the printer and other things which generally cause problems. Boardless can, if you use it a lot on a printer, particularly smaller printers, can gradually clog up the printers and you need to do some cleaning and things like that. So anyway, boardless always a little problematic, but if you're trying to print absolutely up to the edge of the print of the paper, you're gonna have problems. So you need uh, to actually print over it. That's one of the bits where you need to know how wide your paper is, how big it is. Now, with paper sizes, I say it varies, but it doesn't vary in the printer driver. The printer driver just assumes there are certain settings. So you have to allow that anytime you want to do layouts. Similarly, if you set a custom paper size. Now, a lot of printers, printer drivers support custom paper sizes. But make sure that the custom paper size you set is the size of the actual paper. Because otherwise, when you try and lay out your image on the sheet of paper, if the custom size doesn't match the actual size of the paper properly, then the image will be off-centered or not be in the layout where you want it. That also causes problems. I've seen that. Uh, one other thing I'd say with custom sizes, I remember a printer, I can't remember which one it was, a smaller 13-inch printer, where if you wanted to put long sheets of paper in the top, you had to set a custom media size to print panoramics, so big, long, wide. Say this was a sheet of paper that was 13 inches wide by several feet long. I'd need to create a custom paper size. I'd need to feed it in. It turns out that some printers have got bugs in the uh, system that tells them of paper size details, uh, the PPD files. And if you try and specify 13 inches on a particular printer, say you've got 13 inch width paper, it doesn't like it and it won't feed properly. And what you need to do is set it to something like 12.96 inches or something like that. Can't remember the precise numbers in millimeters, but I do remember this is a problem. If you come across that you can't set custom media and it isn't accepted, make sure that it isn't some weird bug so that instead of 13 inch, it needs 12.97 and 12.95 or something like that. If you do custom sizes and you're doing slightly different sizes to the physical size of the paper, remember that sets that affects your layout. Layout is always a problem. I had somebody ask me, and this is one of the things that reminded me to do this, um, they were wanting to print images and they wanted to print them at a certain size. Well, that depends partly on the software you're using to doing the printing and stuff to that. But they were having problem with margins always test something with a test image with not much ink on it or something, you know, just maybe a box or something like that, and try printing that to check your layout. Now, if you've got paper the same size, a cheap paper the same size as the one that you want to use, you can obviously use that. But remember what I said, papers are not always exactly the same size. There can be a little bit of uh, error in it. So, Really, what am I saying? Use test images, be careful, measure the actual size of the paper. If you're using, doing boardless or things like that, be careful to note the image expansion. And if you want to print something precisely on a sheet of paper, measure how big the paper is and also where the image is being positioned relative to. Now, most printers, if this was a larger strip of paper coming through, the positioning of the image on the paper would be based on this edge, so the first edge, and the leading edge. That specifies where your image is going to appear. I can't guarantee that's the same for every single paper because it's not something I can remember checking for every single printer that I've looked at. But if you get layout problems, think about what edges the printing is being measured against and obviously the size of your paper. Now, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions like this, please do ask because it's people asking questions about things like this that make me think about it and realize that there's something maybe worth 
a short video like this. Hope that's been of use. Uh, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. It's always appreciated. Thank you.